Somebody wants something always. And if you can learn what that is and how to communicate how what you can what you can provide can help them with that win-win, you'll never, never struggle selling anything. This is the Full Stack Sales Pro. What up, Full Stack crew? Guys, I am super pumped for this episode. I met these two legends um, at an, a, a, actually a really amazing event in Dallas, Texas, my hometown. And uh, I met them through a friend named Cody Jefferson, who's an absolute legend. And we just started chatting and right out the gate, first thing I hear from Jake is I am the world's greatest salesman. And I was like, oh my God, I have to, I have to interview this guy because I think that I'm the world's greatest salesman, which means he's actually probably really good because only do the world's greatest salesman actually say it in public when they first meet somebody. So anyways, uh, guys, I want to welcome Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ian and Jake, thank you for coming to the show. First of all, I know how busy you guys are because you have like a billion businesses, but also just thank you for your time. So right out the gate, thank you all for joining me today. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Josh. Thanks for your time. And what's up, Jake? Always good to hang with you, my man. Yeah, so we're excited, Josh. Appreciate the opportunity. Just excited to kick it with you guys this morning. Heck yeah, heck yeah. So why don't we start here? Obviously, y'all are in two separate locations, but y'all do have a or multiple businesses together. So let's start here. How did you guys even, you know, meet each other? I mean, was it at a Hawaiian shirt party that I don't know about? And I wasn't. Invited to? <laughs> it looks like it could have been right. I mean, it definitely. Yeah, happened. yeah. If you were just guessing random things, that would be definitely a top <laughs> two or three percentile guess. I actually met yeah. Jake Frugge in a pool in uh in california on a company incentive trip with a company we were both affiliated with in the past and uh, jake had had a few too many drinks and he was new in the company and he was crushing it and he was telling me josh that he was the greatest salesman in the world so we both met in the exact oh, same way awesome. it's <laughs> on par it's on the, trend yeah i mean yeah exactly <laughs> he was on point then he's on point now uh but we actually met in a pool uh in, in uh, right outside of san diego um and it was a, a great experience but we actually built a relationship over the last 10 years now together wow. and jake uh, jake is not lying he's one of the best salespeople that i've ever met and had the privilege to work with and he's just built an incredible business and we're really privileged to own a number of businesses together at this point and it's been a lot of fun right uh, we're, we're like yin and yang he's he's wild and crazy and i make sure nobody goes to jail you know that's like my that's my deal <laughs> In, including him including, including him, him. Sure he's yeah, not yeah going exactly yeah. Including him. Gotcha. jake so do you even remember meeting in or was that day just like a blur to you yeah yeah no it's actually a pretty funny story so i was actually 22 years old um and i was hot on the scene i had broke a lot of records in our company and it's funny because I, I didn't know him yet or his upline or the person that had mentored him. And so I was talking to both of them. And uh, and so you don't have any, you know, you don't have any badges on or that. We're just in a pool. So I'm over here at 22 cocky, you know, not knowing what the heck's going on. They're both making hundreds of thousands a year at this time. The person he was mentored by was making close to almost 80, 100,000 a month. I was making like 4,000 a month, 5,000 a month, just, <laughs> just starting out. I was, I was brand new, but I was, I knew as I was getting promoted, I'd be making 30, 40, 50,000 a month with their promotion. So I'm sitting there giving them advice. I'm sitting there telling Ian like, Hey, look, you know what I would do is I double down. I would get, you know, I, I'd recruit personally, I'd go out there and make calls like this and do this. And he, and he was the coolest, most humble person. He was like, Oh man, that's awesome. But you know, I think I should take that in consideration. No question. Like, you know, but he knew like, <laughs> I knew nothing. So them two, yeah. so he even told me, he said, man, I'm not going to lie. I love your energy and what you're doing at your promote, uh, your position is unheard of. You'll be the first person ever to not be a broker to speak on my conference call. And it was a wow. big deal for me because I wasn't a broker yet. I was still an agent and I did speak on this conference call like 22 years old. Um, but he walked away, him and uh, uh, his uh, mentor. And when my mentor comes up and goes, do you know who you were just talking to? I was like... <laughs> Yeah, these guys, man. I was just trying to give them some tips, man. See if they can. <laughs> He's like, that's Ian Pruckner and his mentor. He said, they make like a hundred thousand a month. They're like one of the best leaders in our company. I was like, 
oh my gosh, are you freaking kidding me? I thought I was helping him. He didn't say a word. He was like, because he's a leader. They don't tell you that. They just let you talk. Yeah. I was like, yeah. So it was actually a really cool intro, but also one of the first, honestly, uh, lessons I learned in humility on, you know, you could be really, really good, but you also can learn from so many different people. And really that pool experience, honestly, I've even talked about it on stages five or six times that you never know who you're talking to and you truly never know yeah. what someone has accomplished. So that's why you want to seek first to understand versus to be understood and listen before talking. And that was one of my honestly life lessons was actually talking to Ian in the pool, drunk at 22 years old, bragging. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must it have not great. been too bad of a combo because, I mean, here we are 10 years later and he's still okay with you, right, Ian? Yeah, yeah. It, it, was, a, it was a great combo. And, and, you know, talent knows talent, right? Killers know killers, period. You just know whether somebody has the goods or not. And, right. uh, you know, he's a little rough around the edges and, uh, you know, a few too many uh, you know, under the influence. But other than that, I'm, I'm like, this guy is a killer. He is just a ball of energy, but he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's mm. doing clearly. And I always loved looking for that upcoming talent and being able to build relationships with it. Because to me, at that point in my business, I was already making a considerable amount of money, but that's how you stay young and fresh and, and, and on your game, right? Because nothing fails like success, right? We get, we start winning, we start dialing in. And the minute we start winning, the minute we start making big money and thinking we know everything, that's the minute we start becoming obsolete. Our skills start going down because we don't take in that new information. And to me, that was what that conversation was. Here's somebody new on the front end who's doing some really big things. Of course I can learn from them. And I want to, I want to harvest that knowledge and I want to distribute that out to, to my sales force. Right. And so 10 years later, we still, we still have that same sort of relationship. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I it's love a, that because it, it's such a, it, it shows the maturity. Okay, so at your level, you're crushing, you know, I think you said 50 to 80K a month or something like that, right? At that time. Yeah, I was right? probably making, yeah, I was probably making 60, 70 grand a month at that time. Okay, but on, like, if we were just being super transparent, you know, like the average person listening right now would be like, oh my God, you were at the pinnacle, you crushed it, you were owning it, which that is good money. I'm not downplaying, it's just, I now, know which we'll get to in a second how much money y'all actually deal with so it, it and compared to what right the, my favorite question compared to what but at yeah. that time the maturity that you even were able to um just model to him by actually listening and saying yo what could i extract from this which obviously reminds me of kobe like every story you hear about kobe bryant he was always that way he was always extracting and learning so how did y'all both get into, and feel free to go first, how did y'all even get into sales? I mean, how did it even turn into like, you're in sales, which then obviously will lead us to where you're at now? I've been selling since I was eight years old. So Josh, my <laughs> first job uh, on Wednesdays in fourth grade, after, uh, after I got out of school, there was a baseball card show at the American Legion Hall in my town. And I love baseball yeah. cards. And so I talked uh, this old man named Rich into giving me one of his three cases in his booth at the baseball card show for free every week. And I would walk up there after school with my case of baseball cards and I would sell them and I would sell it. I ended up with 80,000 baseball cards as a sixth Whoa. grader, right? Like, I mean, I, I was addicted. I make like a G note a week and a hundred percent reinvestment. And then the baseball strike happened, right? And two weeks later, that whole baseball card show was all pogs. You remember pogs, right? I saw, oh, I saw yeah. the end coming. <laughs> it was my first bear market, right? It wiped me out. Um, but that's just like, you know, I've just always sort of been that person that sort of sees what they want and then mm -hmm. figures out who has that and what they might want in exchange and figuring out how to make that win-win happen, right? And that's all that mm -hmm. sales is, helping people get what they already want and need. They just maybe don't know that they want and need it yet or how to facilitate the transaction to get what they want and need. So I've been selling since I was a little kid. Uh, Jake, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, so mine's a little different story. So my parents got put in prison when I was about 15. So uh, they were in and out of actually prison my whole life. So I went to 19 schools before I graduated. And, uh, and so I was basically just selling my way to anything, selling my way onto the team, selling my way to the new girlfriends, selling my way to everything, mm -hmm. right? And then unfortunately, I'm the oldest of seven siblings. And so when my parents got wrapped up um, in different reasons, uh, I started selling you know, pharmaceutical supplies, uh, you know, street <laughs> pharmacy. 
and yeah, uh, yeah. and so I got into that industry, you know, and not because I wanted to, not because I choose to in order. I condone that, uh, but that's really all I knew at the time to make money for my uh, siblings. And so I never did them. Funniest thing ever, I, I consider myself the best salesman ever because people would ask me about the products, and I'd say, "Bro, I'm telling you." I can't even describe how good this stuff is. And I really couldn't because I had never smoked anything. I'd never done anything. I didn't smoke anything until I was probably 21, 22 years old. And uh, and so, but I had to. And so uh, I started doing that and probably 16, 17 years old just to try to like make money to feed my siblings. Uh, and then I wanted to get away from that lifestyle. So I went to the military and uh and so I, w I went to there, and even that, you have ADHD. I had ADHD. I was on medicine since I was four years old, and that's not allowed. So my, uh, my recruiter was like, listen, Y-E-S, if you say yes, that means your enlistment stops. But if you say no, that means numerous opportunities. So I was like, awesome. So I weaned myself mm -hmm. off, and I had to sell them on why I was, uh, you know, should be in the Army and that I was okay. And then I got out of the army, and honestly, Josh, I got back. I, I, I left that lifestyle, never touched that ever again. Uh, you know, obviously, getting back from the military, you kind of learn some stuff. And but I knew I had hustle, and I had street smarts, and I knew I had marketing and distribution and recruiting and training sales associates. I mean, I could do literally anything, which was really a business, you know. And now, obviously, ten years later, it's a real business all over the world. But yeah. the reality of the situation is I knew I should go into something sales. And so I actually got into retail sales uh, and started selling furniture, uh, appliances, TVs, all of that. And then was prospecting into financial services. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so I, I mean, the, the stark contrast between both of your stories from, you know, street pharmacy and pogs. I mean, like, I mean, they're very similar, but you got to push them the same way almost. I mean, pretty much same sales script, right? Same sales script. This pog will take you really, really high. And this, uh, anyway, you've never seen a movie. slammer slam like this slammer. You've it's never seen. This is turning over every stack of pogs that has ever existed. I don't care if they're 50 feet tall. This is coming down on you, uh, which is very similar to what uh, Jake was selling. Um, no, that's great. I, I, I think just hearing y'all stories already, it's just like I, I can see how it's unfolded to where y'all have had the immense success that you've had, even that y'all have now in you know your separate businesses and the business that you do together because there was just so much going on. But I would love to hear quickly, what have you pulled from those earlier moments that have really just magnified even where you're at today? Like what, what, what would you extract, I guess, from that earlier time of, you know, your earlier sales careers? I would say that there's always a win-win. Somebody mm -hmm. wants something always. And if you can learn what that is and how to communicate how what you can what you can provide can help them with that win-win you'll never never struggle selling anything right but most mm. people are pitching their product their their features their benefits and they're not listening to people or understanding their prospects or really in touch with their internal motivations and that's what i learned early on right is people want something okay well then give them what they want and they'll almost always do business with you so that would, that would be the major lesson that I've learned is learn how to listen to people, learn how to understand people, learn how to read people, and then figure out how to position yourself in that market. Yeah. Love that. I mean, to piggyback, same thing. I mean, obviously with what I did, obviously, you know, when you're out there as, uh, you know, selling in a very dangerous environment, one, reading people was my gift. I had to read people, mm -hmm. right? Because, yep. you know, when you're out there selling stuff you don't want to sell, hanging with the wrong types of people... Uh, you know, the reality of that situation is um, you've got to be able to read people to protect yourself, not just to make sales, but just to protect yourself. So I got very good at in any environment. And honestly, Josh, I went to so many schools and was in the rich crowds all the way down to the drugs, the drug crowds and the, you know, beat up people crowds and all these different things that I learned to camouflage myself and adapt to really any situation I'm throwing. It doesn't matter if you put me in a boardroom with billionaires or... A room with drug dealers, I'm perfectly fine and I can 100% adapt that situation. So one would be adaptability. So any sales environment I'm in or any product I'm selling, I just adapt to what I'm selling and to the, the audience that I'm talking to very quickly, like very fast. Um, mm. and number one. And then number two is that hard work beats talent any day, you know? And I, and I really believe that with everything. I mean, it wasn't necessary that I was 
you know, out there as the best drug dealer, nor did I ever practice or try to be a, the best drug dealer. I just knew I had to feed my family. We both so, know he has number one drug dealer award on his wall right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. You know that, right, Josh? If you just yeah, shift that camera club, a little bro. bit, it's yeah, in there. Just, 1997, yeah, number one in the streets. <laughs> yeah, third, third through seventh, third through seventh. I've owned those streets. Third, third, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so here's... But on the truth, my, point, my point was, is there was, I just knew that if I worked harder, if I stayed out later, if I networked more than everyone else, if I, if I pushed products more than everyone else, and I had a why behind it, which was feeding my family, that no one would beat me. And, and like yeah. I said, I never once wanted to stay in that career, but extracting that, getting saved by Christ after the military, giving my life to God, and then putting all of that into actual careers of sales and, and building people and building teams it came yeah. from that industry having to force myself to do that now i'm able and willing to do that and just change the game yeah i love that here's so i always think practical right because in this space we can get very um ethereal easy because a lot of times y'all could say something and i don't need you to explain it because i understand it because i've also walked that life and so i'll i'll be able to immediately extract and i'll be like oh wow that was amazing oh wow that was amazing let me pull that but for those that are maybe in their beginning careers both of the things that you said each each one of you do you believe that they are, are you were born with it or do you believe it can be learned it's 100 percent learnable sales yeah. is the only career and vocation in the world that is 100% skill based, right? Mm. So, you know, if you want to be a basketball player, I call this the theory of tens, right? Like if you want to make big money at anything, you need to be a 10 on a scale of one to 10, you need to be a 10. And even then, most of the time, that's not enough, right? We all know great mm. athletes that never make it to the pros. We all know great musicians that never hit it big, right? Because there's yeah. other outside factors, but at least you have to be a 10, right? Well, if you wanted to be a basketball player, probably six out of those 10 are learnable and earnable and four have to do with how, how tall you are, your muscle fibers, et cetera, right? Like you're five foot three, you look like me, you're not going to the league no matter <laughs> how much you practice, right? Like it's just, it's not an ascendable scale. In sales and in, in all of the pieces that, that comprise sales, it is 100% learnable. You don't need a talent. You don't need a certain background. You don't need an education. You don't need to speak a certain language. All 10 of those 10 merit points are exactly that. They are merit-based. They are learnable. And so I do not believe it's something that you're born with. I believe it is something that you learn, like Jake was saying, right? He learned to adapt because he had to. It was his environment that he was in that caused him to have to learn so that he could survive another day to do that. And it's all learnable, which is great news, right? Because no matter where you are, no matter wh what you've done before, no matter what your lack of experience might be, you can do this, you can learn this skill, you can play this game at the highest of high levels. Yeah. Okay, for devil's advocate's sake, before you jump in, Jake, because you might actually want to jump in on this. Jake, based off of some things that he said, though, he, he had that that unction inside of him where he was like, I'm gonna go hustle, I'm gonna go grind, right? That like, let me make it happen, which could psychologically say he was a product of his environment. And so he was forced in that. But still, even when I got into sales, there were natural skill sets that I had that had nothing to do with sales, my ability to like, I don't fear talking to anybody. But what about the person who's listening, who is an introvert, or timid, yeah. or doesn't enjoy the attention? What yeah. about that? So, so I would say you, can, you need to understand the difference between can't and won't, right? So because you don't want to do something or that it is uncomfortable or not natural for you doesn't mean that you are incapable. And that is a mm -hmm. big differentiation that we need to make, right? Because most of us are walking around with a lot of won'ts that we describe as can'ts and then we limit ourselves, yep. right? So it is all learnable. So good right? What you've done in the past prepares you, right? So, so, so I always tell this to my, my sales teams that I train, right? Some people come into sales and they crush it right away. It's like everything they touch turns to gold. And some people, they have a process. It takes them a little while to get up to speed. Remember the tens, right? Some people come into sales, Josh, as you've described as an eight. I'm already good at speaking to people. I already know myself. I already, I've learned how I'm motivated. 
and I can take action on that. Okay, well you come in, in as an eight, you don't have as big of a, of, of a transition to 10. If I come in as a two, I have a much longer way to go, right? But, but either way, it is still completely learnable. Our circumstances and our experiences prepare us for that journey in varying levels, but it's still preparation. It is, it is not predestination. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. So I we think, somebody tweet that. I, I got to tweet on, it real baby. quick. He said, he said preparation, not predestination. Come on. All right, go ahead, Jake. I got to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. I think the same thing. I think that sales is 100% learnable. I think that people have natural gifts and natural talents. Everybody's got a gift that God gave them, right? It doesn't matter who you are or what, yeah. what it is. It's just a matter of one. I think, unfortunately, most people never find out their gift. <laughs> And they settle before they do, right? So someone tells them you're going to be an attorney or someone tells them you're going to be uh, a doctor or someone tells them you're going to be a teacher and they just believe that narrative and they never even really find or hone into their actual gifts. So they just settle their whole life and float to the rest. They die at 18, just get put in the ground at 80, right? And I think yeah. that uh, that happens a lot. I uh, was fortunate enough to realize very early on, like you yourself, that I was comfortable talking to people. I was I thrive in pressure. I love being my back against the wall. That's where I actually perform the best. Um, I, I'm very, very much an energy person. I literally don't get tired. Like I stay running all yeah. the time. And it is so, bizarre. Yeah, it, it really. It, it, it just, it I just mean, this guy, this guy hustles harder than anybody I've ever met in my life by by two times. <laughs> yeah. for sure. Wow. But wow. at the same time, it. I know people who hustle less than me, and you can see it on them. Like they're tired and they're beat down. You'll never catch me looking like that. Like I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm working 18, 20 hours a day, but then I'm like, I'm thriving. And so that was a gift of mine, but I didn't know where to put it at first. And then when I found sales, like Ian said, I came in with the natural, like you, Josh, I came in with those natural things, but the skill set of building up people or uh, listening first before I speak or uh, making sure they, to find out what the client wants and then present them with the solution. Uh, you know, hear first, answer second. Those are the skill sets that I didn't know that I had to learn. And once I learned them, my natural gifts amplified them times 100. But I was very bad, mm. like very, very bad in the beginning because I would get the sale but lose all my clients because I didn't have the back end. I didn't know how to follow up. I didn't know how to tell you thank yeah. you. So my energy, and I tell this people all the time, back over to you, is your greatest strength is always your greatest weakness. So like for instance, my greatest strength is my energy, right? I'm, I'm never, I don't stop. But to the wrong person, if I don't if I don't know how to present that energy right, it's actually a turnoff to that person. They're either scared or they run away or like, oh, he's a fast talker. He's a, but that's just who I am. So I have to always make sure, and also my words carry a lot of weight. Like I can make you feel like on top of the world. You you could literally feel like you're gonna jump out this window and fly. Yeah. But then I could yeah, literally yeah. say one thing like, "Hey man, you know you didn't uh, uh you know that presentation was a little different today," and then they want to slit their wrist. You know, so <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. to always watch myself that my strength doubles as my weakness. And the only thing I want to add to that is, Ian, by the way, fun fact, is the most introverted person I've ever met in my entire life. And oh, no one okay. knows this on the stage, but he really is the most introverted person. I, he says I'm the most biggest hustler. He's the biggest introvert. If it was up to Ian, I remember riding a, his uh, G-Wagon with him one time, and we're sitting there riding our show. It's like, hey, so what do you want to do? He goes, well, don't ask me that question. I was like, why? I was like, well, if it was up to me, I'm going to go back home and read a book. I was like, what? Whoa. I'm like, bro, we're in Detroit together, man. Let's go have some fun. He goes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. What do you want to do? Because I don't want to do anything but read. <laughs> I was like, okay. And I learned, and I even told him, Josh, I said, what do you mean? You're an introvert? He goes, introvert? He said, dude, all I want to do is be by myself. I was like, wow. well, how? And this is what I want to tell you because I want you to question him on this. I said, well, how? Well, then how do you have the biggest sales team? Like you're 30 you know, years old, making a million a year, and you got 2,000 agents. He goes, well, because I taught myself that even though I didn't want to talk to people, my family needed me to talk to people. So I taught myself. And so I think we should Man. talk about that because he is the biggest introvert I've ever met. <laughs> I, this is literally, I mean, no shade on any other podcast we've done because all of them have been great. I mean, they've, I've had some of the most amazing guests. But I, what I love about this is because I, I almost feel very seen right now myself because a lot of people don't even know my own backstory coming from 
you know, I was a music producer and a drummer. I've traveled the world doing music, and I grew up, you know, grew up playing in the church. My father was a pastor, then started making records. And when I got into sales because of the owner of this company, and I, it was like, oh, my God, everything that I was trying to fit inside the music industry that always made people, it's like, oh, you come across sales or whatever. And it wasn't. I was just, I was full of energy, and I love talking to people. But musicians are a bunch of you know, for the most part, whiny baby introverts, and they want to stay comfortable and drink their coffee and not deal with anything. And so it's like, and then write a song about it, which I'm like, okay, that's great. Like, I loved it too, but I always wanted to grind. And like y'all's story, it's like, when I came into sales, it showed me, like, where to put all of this. It was like there was a little lane for everything about my personality. And I think that's why I fell in love with sales, because it didn't say, hey, you are locked into this thing. It actually said, look at who you can be now. Because to, to be in sales, like what I'm doing now, like we have a three-day training that starts tomorrow, and we're doing a whole entire three-day training, and I'm just trying to teach everything I know in three days, basically, and just giving it away for free because we want to, we just want to invest into people. But that would have never happened if I would have just stayed boxed in into it's like, hey, be this person inside of this. And what I've seen in sales and what I've even just – hearing all stories right now it's like sales opens you up for so many other possibilities that that allow you to do that so go into in real quick how did you teach yourself that because i i knew that you were going to respond that way based off of just what i know about what you're saying i'm glad that you said it that way because i believe it is a choice just even like yeah. love like no we're Absolutely. i'm choosing to do and this by, day in and day out and by the way ian is a musician Fun fact. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I turn still this have the studio. Right now, you'd see you'd see about twenty five of the coolest guitars in the world. Okay. Oh my gosh, um, dude! Hey, I'm well, still doing tracks, so I'll send some to you so you can get on them. Yeah. 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 To a musician, yeah. that can write a song about yeah. it. Yeah. No, but, but, yeah. but the truth is, it's about clarity and desire, right? Like when the why is clear, the how to appears. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. And so when I knew what I wanted and why I wanted that, then I needed to find a solution. Well, wh what's my pathway here? And to me, that pathway was sales. And the pathway to get into sales, I, I have to talk to people, even though I don't want to talk to people or I'm uncomfortable with it, or what if they don't like me or anything. It was a necessity. It was the only roadway to the destination, right? And so when you want something bad enough, you'll find a way there. And that was me, that was my story. I was tired of being broke. I was you know, newly married when I started uh, you know, really in my first career in sales. I was you know, broke. I was actually a pastor as, uh, as well, worked for the ministry full time as a music director. Um, you know, I was tired of being poor and I was tired of struggling and I was tired of feeling like a loser. Um, <laughs> and so I had to change. And, you know, when you hate changing enough to lose, you lose. When you hate losing enough to change, you change. And that was me. I was tired of losing. And so I decided to change. And if that meant I had to get over something that I was uncomfortable with, well, then so be it. Right. And yeah. so that was that was sort of how I've always approached life. Like there's nothing I can't do if I'm clear about why I need to do that. And most people who struggle in sales, Josh, they're really not bad salespeople. They're unclear. They don't really mm -hmm. know why they need to be great salespeople. And so because they don't know why they don't have the proverbial pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, they don't follow that rainbow. Right. They mm -hmm. don't they don't go to the training that you're giving. I mean, my goodness, it's free. Like, but there will be people who should be there, need to be there, won't be there because they just don't know what it's for anyways. And that was, yeah. I just always was able to dial in on like, what do I want in my life and how am I going to get there? And whatever way legal, moral, and ethical that I can get there with, I'm going to get there. And, and that's, mm. that was the genesis of that education. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? Mm. And there's a lot of comfortable people out there that shouldn't be comfortable at all. Yeah, yeah. And, and what you said, Josh, earlier when you were talking about teachable and learnable, like skill set, I think sales is 100% learnable. Desire is not, right? Mm. Like the reality is the desire is not teachable. Like I can give you every skill set under the sun, but if you don't have the desire to go out there and make this work or the desire to go make money or the desire to help your family, the desire to be better, or the desire, I can't teach that. I can't teach desire or discipline. Like people... All the time, I say, well, I wish I had your discipline. No, if you had my desire, you'd have my discipline because you'd be focused because you know you have something you're focused for. But I don't think he, his desire to be better for his family forced him to change. Your desire 
right? To go be great and use those gifts and put them in a different lane showed you how to become a salesperson. My desire to, you know, not end up in prison and not have my, you know, uh, uh, sisters and my brothers go to a child home or something. My desire forced me out into doing something better with my life. And so I just don't think you can teach desire, but you can teach everything else. I'm going to disagree okay, with you, Okay, but do you... Man. Oh, yeah, uh, we're, we're going to have a rumble here. We're going to have a rumble, Josh. You've got to get ready here. Uh, you can teach desire because I teach people desire all the time. Everybody has a desire. Everybody, now, now hear, hear my heart on this, brother, right? Because you, you'll agree with this when you understand what I'm saying. Everybody has desire. Most of us, our desire has been compacted down under years of mediocrity, no. years of settling, years of programming that we're going to be nothing, have nothing, do nothing, be thankful for where you are, don't want too much, don't dream too big, don't fly too high, right? And so we all have desires, but it's those desires have been disabled. They've sort of been numbed. They've been uh, disengaged by the life in the surroundings that we've chosen. And so you can teach desire and it, it starts, I, I teach a concept called the seven whys, Josh. And so here's an easy way to, to do this. So Jake, I might, I might say, well, what do you, what do you want? Well, I want to be rich. Okay. Well, why is that important to you? That's why number one. Well, I'm tired of being poor and I like what it can do for me. And you know, I want to have the things I want. Well, why does that matter? Well, I've never had the things I wanted before and I want people to respect me okay and look at me in a certain way well why is that important you get seven whys deep on what you say you want at a surface level and you are going to hit the rock bottom of the human soul about the things that matter most to us those those uniquely human characteristics the problem is most of us never think we let other people do our thinking for us and so we just go and do what we're told and we settle for what people will give us. So, so Jake, your point is well taken, right? I would say that you, you have to develop desire, right? Yeah. Because it's in everybody. Yeah, that's what it's actually in my notes for tomorrow's training. Cause my whole day one is about what y'all are talking about around it. Cause I'm like, I'm kind of there with Jake where I'm like, you can't teach it because it's actually, I think already embedded into somebody but you can cultivate it, develop there it, you go. extract it and pull it out. Most people don't even know they have a desire. They just know, um, I hear this all the time. It's like, don't tell me what you don't want. Tell me what you do want. People have spent their whole life knowing what they don't want and they know how to communicate that very clearly, which just means they're problem centric and they don't know what their desire is. But people like me and Jake, we, we it's like it's in our DNA and it comes out and it actually drives us. So when skill set is low, that's fine. We'll make up for that in production. <laughs> we'll make up for that in in volume. But what I love about what you're saying is there is that flip side where even the sales teams that I have right now and I'm training them, they'll just be like, well, you know, the no shows and the and this and that person had no credit. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, yeah. So they're like, well, the last 10 people I talked to, they don't, they don't, they don't have any money. They're not qualified. I, I go, great. So how are you going to hit your goals? And they're like, well, I don't know. I'm like, maybe you talk, need to talk to another 10 people. Maybe you need to talk to another hundred people. And it's like that lack of clarity, right? If I could just borrow from the ancient text, right? When there is no vision, people will perish. They will fall off. They will just die and wither up because they don't know you know it's like how you said with your family jake like you're not gonna watch those your brothers and sisters be on the street it's just not gonna happen i look at my wife and kids right now and i'm like i ain't i'm not going that route right like i'm not i'm not going to continue down this route and just them look at me and be like well why don't we have this well daddy was a big lazy tail and didn't want to you know actually call make an extra 20 calls that day you know what i mean i don't know do y'all see this in your own teams uh, probably not because they're probably perfect and amazing and uh, they're they all are perfect <laughs> and amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're perfect and amazing in their own way, for sure. Uh, no, it's, 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 uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, you see it all the time, man. You know, being in the financial services, you know, I was talking, to, I actually called Ian about this literally yesterday, like two days ago. And I said, bro, I said, I think about the last 10 years, the decade of the amount, like I'm, I'm talking thousands, like 30,000 people I've recruited and or trained. And I said, man, like now we have, I have 15 companies now, you know, uh, me and Ian own five or so more together and 
probably own another 10 by the end of the year. And I'm like, man, when we talk to different these types of people, you know, man, I can talk to someone and it, it just it works. And, man, we, we do million-dollar deals, $10 million deals. It's easier to talk about $10 million deals sometimes than you get someone to spend $100 on a life insurance policy or they make, to make five phone calls to get a bonus. <laughs> like I say, hey, I'll pay you $100 to make 20 calls. And they're like, I just don't oh know. What, what if they say no? And, and, I, and he said, man, you know, unfortunately in that industry, we were dealing with a lot of people that we were pulling it out of. They had never even experienced that yet. They've never had the skill set yet. And so we were training, you know, let's just call it a zero to become the hero, right? Versus now, I talk to a lot of higher end people that already in their own right space is the, is the hero, right? So they think right. differently. But I, I can't tell you many people, even today, like I was on a goal training literally two days ago. And I'm watching people walk on stage and they go, yeah, last week I didn't do any sales. I also didn't hire any new agents and I didn't, uh, I didn't pass any tests, but, uh, you know, I really, you know, gave them my best, but this week I'm going to help five clients. And I'm like, you didn't, first off, how can you feel okay <laughs> walking on a stage and saying, I did nothing for seven oh. whole days, 168 hours. I did nothing like zero. But unfortunately, the world we live in, especially with the culture of participation awards and participation trophies, uh, and you just show up and you're a winner and you're a superstar, that world is really training people that I can legitimately join something and expect the riches because I joined it. And, yeah, and yeah. I, you know, like, and even in the gym, I joined the gym, so I'm going to have a six pack. And it's like, <laughs> You I wish it was like that. Oh, you ain't lying. I joined 15. <laughs> oh, God, I would. <laughs> right? But you have to show up and actually put the work. And I think that this culture as a whole and just the people I've trained over the last 10 years, that's why what I mean you can't teach, you can cultivate because he is right. I mean, I've had people that come in and like are Eeyore, and now they're some of my top people that are in my organization. <laughs> but but yeah. to his point, they still have to have the desire to want that desire. Because if I if I ask those seven questions, they go, yeah, I'm cool with all that. I just don't want nothing out of life. Well, okay. So it, it, the reality is, though, most people, Josh, I really believe that no matter what you tell them, until they truly get emotionally connected to why they're doing it, they're going to sit there and look at that list for the next five years and say, I'm a salesperson, but I don't want to make any of these calls. But I'm telling you, a prospect's going to walk right in and buy something from me. And that's oh just kind of my God. philosophy is people have to really emotionally connect to why they're doing it before ever, anything ever gets done. I, it's just like, it's so spot on. Like I'm, I'm almost like, I feel, I, again, I feel seen in her cause I'm like, cool. It's not just me. It's not like, it's just, you know, our space that we're in that. that Jake's people, doing a great uh, job validating you today, Josh. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to say, tell me what, what's your Stripe account or your Venmo account? Who do, who do I pay in this moment? Thank he's, you for my free counseling session. He's accepting counseling donations later. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> okay. We're going to pass the virtual plate here in a second. <laughs> yeah, let's let's pass it. You can drop it off. Here's a QR code. Scan it. We'll get going. Um, here's what I do want to talk about. Um, I mean, granted, y'all can actually talk about anything, but I, I know we're kind of wrapping up on time. This is absolutely phenomenal, but I was blown away by one of your businesses that you're doing. Now, granted, you do a lot, and I kind of want you to talk about the, the, the digital space, it's just because I would think um, with the sales pros who are listening, the people who are business owners, and the way that they're all, everyone's looking for investment opportunities right now, I feel like it would be very valuable, but also I want y'all to have the space to talk about whatever you want. But if you'd sure. be open, I'd love for you to talk. Yeah, about for sure. Business. So, so, uh, Josh, what you're talking about is, is the digital rental property, the digital real estate that we were yes. talking about. And it goes back to what I said at the beginning, what do people want and need and how do you get yourself into that market? And today what people want and need more than ever before it is truly passive income, right? Is to yeah. be able to take their money and get it to produce more money because when you're trading time for money, you're always short of one or both, right? You might have all the money in the world, but no time to enjoy it, or you might have all the time in the world, but no money. And you know, we have created a proprietary product in the digital space. It is a digital asset that's best described as digital rental property, digital real estate, that is the greatest passive income producing asset that I've ever seen. 
And, mm -hmm. uh, and so Jake and I are partners in that company. And uh, we've got a number of other partners, in, including the, the gentleman that invented this product. And um, it's a wild ride right now. I mean, we are like just pedal to the metal, you know, scaling like mad. And it's, uh, it's probably one of the most fun journeys that I've ever been, uh, been on just to watch week by week the growth of the company. I mean, we're hiring, I don't know, five, six people a week, it seems like at this point. And, and just scaling this thing wow. up massive. Jake, I don't know if you want to talk about sort of what that product does or why people who are listening might find some value in it, but that's sort of the overview of, of what it is. Yeah, you know, a year and a half ago, um, you know, it was funny, me and Ian were on a clubhouse and uh, we're a thing, we're, we both want passive income. We made a lot of money. We we're both making seven figures at the time. And, you know, there's this thing called taxes. You know, we all have that uncle, no one wants to invite to the barbecue, uh, Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, we're always looking for tax write-offs, number one. Uh, and then two, we want to be able to diversify our streams of income. You know, I think there's so much missing context in the seven streams of income. Uh, you know, if you want to be a billionaire, you need seven streams of income. But there, it's without context is that people think that they need to put their physical presence in seven different things. And so in reality, they just get seven jobs and they basically limit their income back to the same income with seven different jobs. And so what I always was fascinated was like, man, I want to stick to my passion income. What am I passionate about What my God given gift is? That's what I'm going to use as my ATM and get all the cash. But I need to take this cash and just buy other things that pay me money. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to put any time in. I don't want to put any mind share in. Uh, even when it comes to companies and Ian's taught me this even more, but I already had this mindset, but he's even really amplified is like, how many hours a week? Like I'm going to say, okay, I need to put five hours and that's my tops. But like, it's going to be vision. It's going to be intentional. I'm going to delegate and hire staff, systemize and system myself out of it. But even in those businesses, I still make money. Where can I just put the money and get paid an income? Like, and so I started researching that at a young age at 25. Probably I started researching everything I could do to just get passive income. We're on a clubhouse one day and he, and I go, Hey, I'm about to get a Walmart store. And Ian's one of the moderators. He goes, Hey, I'm about to get a Walmart store. I was like, oh, well, who are you getting yours with? He goes, oh, someone in Detroit or somewhere. I was like, oh, I'm getting something in Miami. He goes, okay, cool. Let me know how it goes. Well, when I went through that process, Josh, customer service was completely crap, right? It was just the way they were treating me, the way they were dropping the ball. I was like, okay, well, if they're doing this with me in the to get my money, how are they going to treat me once they have my money, right? Mm -hmm. And so I said, man, I want to start my own dang company. I'm going to use their business model, hire my people, and get my partners that I know think just like I think, and we're going to slaughter this thing. So I called Ian. Well, I had two partners. And someone had referred it to me, by the way, one of my good friends. And I said, I'm in. Let's do it. And then I called, and they were like, can you think we can get Ian as a salesperson? I said, bro, Ian is not. I said, I'm going to call him. <laughs> Ian ain't going to come on as a <laughs> salesperson. So yeah, I called yeah. Ian. I'm like, hey. Before you go buy your store, you can buy one for me. So I started selling him on just getting a store for me first. He goes, what? Did you, did you start a company? I said, yeah, man. I was thinking every time you sell a store, we can just throw you some money. Da, da, da. And he goes, Jay, I'm not doing anything if I don't own it. And I was like, thank God. Can you yeah. say it just like that on our next meeting? Because <laughs> I'm going to put you on the phone with our board members, our partners, and I want you to tell them exactly that so we can get you as a partner. He goes, okay. Yeah. So we get on, he tells him that, and boom, we we, we uh, uh, amend the LLC, we get him on as a partner, and boom, we start going from there. But this product, we started with Walmart stores, Walmart stores went kaput, went to our Amazon stores, FBM. We see a lot of problems in the FBM, so we switched all that to FBA. So we're, we're going to be the first, I really believe the first company to really scale as big as the FBM companies with an FBA model. Um, but we started the digital real estate because at first, I'm going to be honest, Josh, I wasn't even that jacked about it. Ian was like, I'm telling you, this is the product you're going to love. I'm like, dude, it's so boring. It's like $500 a month. It's not a big deal. And I didn't understand it because I was already killing it. We were making two, three million a month already on the Amazon. And so I was already, yeah. I'm over here focused. He said, just trust me. So after about two months, I researched it and it is the best product I've ever seen in my entire life. It truly is. And so essentially what it is, and you know, real easy explanation, think physical real estate, okay? Let's say Ian owned 500 houses and you wanted to come to Ian Josh and buy 50 of those houses, right? Well, we get a real estate agent, we do the transaction, he put the deed into your name on 50 homes, you now own the homes. Well, Josh, you're a salesperson. You ain't got time to go change the AC, change the shingles, deal with the tenants, so what do you do? 
you hire a property manager, you pay them part of your rent, and that creates the passive income stream. Well, I want you to think the exact same way, but just think with domains, right? So if you if you had a gated community in your uh, uh, city, Josh, and you're like, I want to live there. Well, what do you do? You buy the lot first, the dirt, for 100 grand. Mm -hmm. Then you get a construction loan, you build the house, and either you move in or you get a tenant to move in. We do the same thing digitally. So what happens is we own a slew of domains that we've done research on that create a high traffic value, high value uh, uh, contract services, such as water uh, removal, uh, mold removal, dog walking, plastic surgeons, concrete companies, whatever the case may be. We buy up all the domains, the lots per se, we buy the lots, and then what we do is someone comes to us and they purchase that lot from us, they purchase the domain from us, right now we're at 7,000, they purchase that domain from us for 7,000, and then what we do is, the next two or three months, we turn that domain into a landing page, aka the house. We turn it into a landing page, and then what we do is we SEO and send tons of traffic to that site, which creates a ton of lead generation. So now this DallasConcreteCo.com is having 150 people call that site for a quote every single month, right? Because they, we have our site SEO to the top where it's, when they type in concrete, boom, our site's there. Well, yeah, now we have yeah. either two options, either A, we have national buyers that now buy those leads from us straight off, or we have a concrete person in Dallas that we now have our sales team call them and say, hey, Josh, I've got this site that's getting 150 requests for concrete every month. Is that important for you, your company? Of course, they say yes. And then we rent that, let's say, for uh, a minimum, our minimum target is 500 a month. But let's just say we say, okay, that's going to be 1,000 a month. Well, Josh, you bought the domain from us. You own the lot. We built the house for you, which would be the landing page. And then, so we were the agent in that point. But then we operate immediately as the property manager. And we go find the tenants for you. We go find the national buyers to buy those leads from you. So you own the domain outright. It's yours 100%. And then all the lead generation that we get and the money from that, whether it be national buyers or a renter, we do all that on your behalf. So you literally send us the money. You never have to talk to us again if you don't want to. And then every single month, we send you 75% of what that landing page is making. We keep 25% to manage it. And we send you. So we have some that have... 500 we have we, we start them at 300 and then the first month just to start them get them up to a thousand we have some i have one of my good friends made five thousand on his last month and mm. they can and they give vary right now once again not typical they got to grow and scale to that point but they're starting at 500 and i tell people all the time if you just had a hundred of these sites that's 700 grand let's use an example but even if they're making 500 to a thousand that's seventy five thousand a month every single month whether you walk out the door or not, just coming straight into your account every single day. And I'm talking zero, zero upkeep, zero checking in, zero uh, effort on your part at all, Josh. Once you buy them, you get paid on the first of every month. And that's what yeah. we want to create a champion passive income solutions. We want to create a company that you could truly stay in your lane and just send us the money and we pay you for the rest of your life. And that's what we've yeah. created with these products. I, what I love about it the most is because like I'm invested in commercial real estate and a couple of our properties are like triple net lease or full net lease. And it has that same type of perspective. But, you know, for me to even get in that, it was a minimum of 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand to get started. Plus your leverage. Right? Pre pressure leverage. But in this case, some of the deals were done to where they let's just say they weren't as leveraged as I normally would be. But my point is this. What you guys have right now helps people who are like, yo, I can get seven grand, you know what I mean? Or I could get 14 grand. Maybe I can't, I don't want 50 yet, you know, especially sales pros where they can hop in and say, hey, I had two, three really good months. I keep my monthly burn low and boom, now I can get one website or one domain and then another month. And it allows people to start this passive income journey honestly at almost with nothing i mean i don't mean with nothing you know what i mean by that but it the lower barrier of entry point allows people to build and that's what i'm most excited about is people having the ability to have the legacy option the ability to have something for you know god willing their children's 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 type of a thing you know what i mean so that there is an opportunity because most people see real estate which is phenomenal and i love it but it's so daunting to them even as people who are making you know on average 15 to 25 grand a month. They're still like, how do I collect 
you know, 100, 150, but this is an option that at least allows them to really say, no, get your foot in the door, get started, right? Yeah. And this seven grand, worst case scenario is 500, okay? Well, that's normally, you can expect 10%, but that's gonna cost me 50 grand in real estate to get 500 bucks a month. Yeah. You know what I'm and, saying? And I mean, crazy. I know y'all know that, but that's why yeah. I wanted to talk an, about it. It's an eight to one leverage against traditional real estate. Whatever you would need to, yeah. to create that same income, you would need to pay eight times more in traditional real estate. Yeah, yeah. what's cool too, Josh, yeah. for the tax write-offs, we have clients that do one, but we have clients that buy 100, 200, 300, 50, 40, 70, 30, because you're not just buying passive income, although that's what we're so excited about. Each one of these properties, you're writing the entire thing off because it's a service. You're paying us a service to make this domain actually make money. So you get these huge tax write-offs for the build of them, and then when you're paying us to 25% every month to manage them, you're writing that off as well. It's basically a payroll. You're paying us to keep that SEO coming, that expense. And so you have, we have mega millionaires that are coming in going, man, I need a huge write-off, and they buy a slew of these things, but then the cool thing is instead of having to buy some RV, you just park in your driveway for a write-off that you never use, because yeah. that's what your CPA told you to do. You go buy a $300,000 RV, you turn that into Let's see, seven, that's a, what, about uh, 45 domains? Well, now instead of having an RV you're never gonna use, you just had a similar, the same write off, but you just created 20 to $40,000 a month in passive income with a tax write off. And that's the yeah. giant deal about it. And then you take that income and just keep buying more passive income outlets. Yeah, it's a it's pretty special thing. Yeah, it really is. Special. It really is. And, and obviously, like, I mean, I, uh, guys, I mean, everybody knows on the show, I'm not like affiliated anything. It was a simple, a simple conversation. I met you guys standing at the back of an event and we just started having this chat and I was just like, oh my God, I have to put these guys on the show because A, y'all sales experience alone was just awesome to hear. And it was, there's just, you know, that synergy from that standpoint. But then I was just like, yo, this is a really great way for, y especially young sales pros. Imagine Jake, if you had this when you were 22. You know what I mean? Oh, it, it was yeah. just like it, it been, the game would have been over, right? You know. So, uh, anyways, um, guys, thank you for your time. I just, I'm just super grateful. If people wanted to uh, learn more about this, or I mean, because obviously, y'all do a whole lot more. We didn't even get into y'all's uh, financial planners and and the the bigger businesses and all that that y'all do. How would people get in contact with you and and be able to engage and get more information? Uh, you can follow me uh, on Instagram at Ian Pruckner. Uh, watch out. There's about 12 of me at any given time that will try to sell you Bitcoin or rescue your uncle from Sri Lanka. So just make sure oh, it's, it's the real me. <laughs> you know, yeah. Make sure it's the real me. But at Ian Pruckner on Instagram. Uh, you follow Jake on Instagram as well. Jake, what's your handle? Yes, yeah, Jake Fruge Jr. That's J-A-K-E-F-R-U-G-E-J-R. -E -E and I also have about 18 of those people as well. So... Make sure yeah, it's the yeah. people's champ. The people's champ. So, uh, yeah, but yeah. Excited. Yeah. And also, as and Josh, as we'll as get you a link too that if people want to jump on a free informational please. live webinar where they can jump on and, and, and watch and ask some questions to some of our operating team. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would love it because webinar. I asked. Yeah, I love it because I asked a bunch of questions when I met y'all about, you know, like I, I was vetting y'all, the downsides. I want to know. It's like my free third, my, my, favorite three questions asked are what are the upsides what are the downsides and can I live with the downsides and so it's like um, I know that they'll be able to get all of that information from you guys but again thank you so much we'll put all the links in the show notes and that way you can do it uh, full stack crew thank you for watching again we uh, as of right now we run no ads to this thing the only thing we ever ask is simply if you got anything out of it just share it somebody somewhere your great uncle who's in Sri Lanka that needs to be rescued might need to hear this show and just have that eye-opening revelation. Um, it could be simple as somebody that you know that might be in sales of some form or is looking for an investment vehicle. Um, all we ask is that you share this. Pass it on to make sure that that knowledge is being uh, distributed out. But again, as always, thank you guys. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate y'all. And uh, until next time, guys.